to miniature gardening. We're going to call it miniature gardening tonight, so the males in here can kind of keep some of our masculinity. We're going to call it fairy gardening. Um, so, so what is fairy gardening? Um, so we're going to, I'm going to explain to you how I approach it. I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm not saying it's the wrong way. Um, there's, to me, gardening is about experience and creativity. Um, so it's all about the eye of the beholder. There's a lot of art and there's a lot of science to it. So the art side of, th side of things is all on how you perceive it and if it looks good to you. So again, I'm going to explain how I approach it, and but again, you don't have to follow that guideline. So in creating a fairy garden, miniature garden, we approach it in a way that it's kind of unique. You're kind of gardening on a miniature scale, but you also container gardening. So when container gardening, you're kind of always looking at um, you know, the rules of three. Three textures, um, three colors, and three sizes. And so what do I mean by three textures? Um, you know, you're picking out plants that are varying in leaf texture. So you got this really bold, strong leaf, and that kind of stabilizes the, the piece, the garden, the container. You got this trailing, um, it's kind of small miniature leaf, and that kind of fills in. And you got this real fine texture, and that, that furry looking, feathery type foliage. So that, that's when, when I say texture, that's what I'm talking about. Um, so then we talk about three sizes. So then we're talking about, a lot of times I use uh, thriller, um, spiller, and filler. So you want a plant that kind of comes up and shoots out of your garden. You want a plant that's kind of there to just fill in the gaps. And you want a plant that's kind of coming over the edges. So um, go back to this one. This would kind of be your spiller, something that's kind of softening the edges of your garden. Um, your thriller would be um, something more upright, like this uh, ficus benjamita. Um, or your filler would be one of these nice little miniature ferns, where it's more filling in your garden. Um, and then color is fairly obvious. You know, you don't want a solid green. I mean, you can, you can, but traditionally you wouldn't want to go all green. You want some um, different color in there, just kind of play off each other. Um, these are the examples that I've made up. This is everything that's available when you go to Maker Garden. So this is a small one. Um, you can see we have um, some juga, prayer plant, and um, nerve plant in here. And then we have our little fairy accessory, plus some rocks. Um, so when you're, you're doing the fairy garden container, you're also going to think about how you approach a garden in the landscape. You know, you're not just shoving everything in a pot and saying, oh, there's a fairy. You're going to try to create some texture within the landscape and some, um, some lows and highs. Um, pathways, routes to go around the plants, um, just as you would be walking through Kingwood Gardens. Um, so we have all of our accessories and our plants up here. We have um, some fillers and freebies over here that you're available to use. Um, this table is exactly the same in the back. So you guys can go to the front or back, wherever is less crowded. Um, you guys receive sheets, right? Okay. On those sheets says what you get. So um, if you have a small one, you're getting a one item from group B. And then you're getting three two-inch plants. The other key thing is it's fairy gardening. So focus on your plants. That's that's where your garden will really come to life. If a lot of times we want we get caught up in the accessories and what's in there. Focus on the plants first and then come back with the accessories really find the textures and the colors and make it flow um, and just see how that turns out for you. Um, again though, we do have fillers. We have a lot of these coleus cuttings that were stuck and rooted for about a couple weeks. Um, we also have these nice flats of sedums which has seven or eight different types of sedums. Um, Laura and I were just at a, one of North America's largest horticulture conference and we were able to bring some goodies back and we're going to share them with you today. Um, and then I have this um, crate of broken 
ceramics and glass and rocks, and it's a good way to really bring out your creativity, whether you can find a table or a little pool of water that you sink down in your, your garden. Um, so, I think that's it. Um, do you guys have any questions or concerns? <laughs> How do you maintain? How do you maintain? That's a good question. So, um, every, all the plants here are indoor plants. Um, they are partial shade plants, so it's not going to be direct sun. Um, you're going to want to keep them indoors throughout the winter. They can definitely go out on the patio during the summer, but they are tropical plants. Um, we do have some other hardy shrubs and hardier type plants, but the ones we're using tonight are purely tropical. Um, so you can see on these, these were planted up about three or four weeks ago. And so on a, a, I can't walk down here. Hopefully I don't, but then you're going to be on video. Um, the, so you can see these, um, I did this about a month ago. And I just came at scissors with them today. So keep them miniature form. There's going to be some pruning involved, especially when you start growing things like the coleus, the fillers up there that I'm providing for free. Um, you're going to have to come in and pinch those back, trim those back, keep them short to the ground. Um, or else they end up taking over your whole garden. And you'll start losing your pathways through there. We also provide rocks on the tables. We have more rocks up here. So if you run out, we do got more. We got more soil. Um, anything else? I'm trying to Oh yeah, like I said, make sure you bring your papers. I really try to make this workshop, it creates a lot more work, but I really try to make this workshop so that it is creative and it's not a cookie cutter. You're not coming here making exactly what I'm making and you're leaving. Gardening is meant to be experienced, it's meant to be an art, and it's meant to be something you take home or you do because you like it. So I'm trying to make it as flexible as you can so you can create something that you're proud of and that's unique to you. So the rocks are decorative? The rocks are decorative. The rocks should come in last. So um, as you are, and I'll, I'll, be try, I'll be reminded that I need to say a little something as we are going through this all together. Um, but um, the rocks are last. Focus on your plants and get your accessories then. Um, feel free if you get a fairy or you get something up here and you go back to your garden, you're not quite happy with the way it looks, you can take it back up and swap it out. That's okay with me. Um, make sure you have your papers. The, um, yeah, the other, the other thing is, I'll be around, or I'll be floating around, and I'll be constantly giving advice. If you want my advice, if you don't, that's okay too. Um, if you realize you want to make another one or um, upgrade, you can do that too. It's not too late. And the, I'd like most people to have the opportunity to kind of get their accessories, but you're also available to buy more if you want to get more than that, too. Okay? So when you water these things, you don't really like, drown them? Or? So you're going to water them just like a normal container, as you would anything outside. Um, we put screens in them to hopefully reduce some of the soil that would come out through the cracks of the wood. Um, so hopefully it makes less of a mess, but I would still recommend watering it within your sink or outside because you're still going to get some particles coming out. Um, but when you go to water, water it thoroughly. Make sure everything gets really wet and then let it dry out to the touch before you water it again. And remember, it's gardening. Gardening is ever-changing and you're ever-critiquing. You're not going to create this container. You're going to take it home, put it on your shelf, and it's going to sit there for a year and stay exactly the same. You're going to be constantly working at it. Some of you are like, oh no. <laughs> I, thought, I thought this was an easy garden. No, this is, this is gardening as if you were doing an outside brought down to a miniature scale. So you will still be, you'll have plants that aren't doing quite right and you want to remove them and replace them and you'll, hopefully you'll be critiquing it as you go along. Okay? So any recommendations on soil depth or so, when you go to plant, and this is true for any time you're planting, almost true, 90% of the time, you're always matching the soil line that the plant's already at. So don't bring that soil line up above and don't leave it down below. Try to match the soil line that's already there. You come up too high, 
you can rot off the stems. If you stay too low, they can dry out and die because it, it doesn't wick up well enough. So try to stay at the same level, okay? So you're saying we only want the soil as deep as we're installing those plants? Yeah, well, no, oh, I'm sorry. You can bring the soil line up as high as you want. Okay. But you want to plant the plant the surface level. Any other questions? Yes. How, how firm do we make the soil? Oh, Should it be right. firm on the bottom, so, you know, so light on the top? A lot of times we have a bad tendency to take soil and smush it together, right? Pack it in there, right? Make it, make it nice and firm. When you go to do that, you're ruining everything that makes that soil soil. You want that air, you want that to be um, break up, breakable so the air can get through, the roots can get through that soil easily. The only time you go to pack something is whether or not it can stay up on its own. That's the only time you really want to start firming that soil. You want to try to leave that soil free and easy if you can. Because like I said, you're taking out all that air space and you're taking out all that ability to um, retain water and whatnot. Any other questions? Okay, so we're just going to jump right into it. Like I said, I kind of prefer to let, let you guys kind of move on and just experience it for yourself. We have plenty of volunteers. I'll be around. We'll be helping you along the way. If you have questions, we'll be here. And we have plenty of time. <laughs>